I'm out here in the garden uh, and sulfur is a very very important element uh, for plants not necessarily in its actual elemental form although it's a very useful powder for dusting against fungus and other pests but sulfur is very important for the structure of proteins and most especially in vegetables for uh, the fixation of nitrogen and that will of course come in the form of sulfates and bizarrely enough one way that uh, plants get sulfur is from the dissolving of sulfur dioxide in the rain to form uh, sulfurous acid which then of course uh, allows them the ability to dissolve other minerals that are, that are in the soil bound up uh, to be soluble and then take up into their systems. One way of course of getting sulfur uh, into plants is a good dosage of manure, uh, horse manure, and we're going to look at uh, the amount of hydrogen sulfide that you can find in manures uh, later on, and we'll look at the uh, gas hydrogen sulfide as well later on. But what we're going to do is we're going to see what would happen, uh, this lovely little geranium, if it had too much sulfur dioxide, and we're going to be looking just a little bit at the destructive nature of uh, acid rain and sulfur dioxide. So one way, of course, of synthesizing sulfur dioxide rather easily without burning sulfur in the chemistry laboratory is by the chemical reaction between potassium metabol sulfide uh, or sodium metabol sulfide and an acid. And I've just got uh, two molar sulfuric acid here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, add our potassium metabol sulfide into our flask and then we're going to connect it up to it funnel and in the bell jar here you can see a lovely red geranium. Now sulfur dioxide has the property of being able to uh, reduce colouring agents and uh, what we will see is over time the, the colour in this geranium will begin to fade and the whole plant in fact uh, will begin to die simply just because of the acidic conditions the sulfur dioxide around it. Of course, as the plant respires, instead of breathing in carbon dioxide, it's going to be breathing in very noxious, choking sulfur dioxide. And of course, it's going to disrupt lots of uh, the enzyme processes in the respiration. And you'll be quite impressed, I think, with the dramatic results that we see when we come back to uh, this plant in about 10 minutes. So let's get on with the process of filling the bell jar with sulfur dioxide. Here we've got the potassium metabol sulfide in our flask. And I'm simply just going to take the stop key and start dripping some sulfuric acid onto the metabol sulfide. It's beginning to bubble here. And that's beginning to get off the gas, the sulfur dioxide. So it'll travel up through into the bell jar and surround the poor little plant with a very toxic atmosphere. Clearly you can see the reaction between the sodium metabol sulfide and the sulfuric acid here. It's produced uh, sulfur dioxide. We've allowed the sulfur dioxide to fill the gas jar. I'll just disconnect the apparatus. As we can see here already, the geranium is no longer looking like a vibrant red geranium. Within a few moments, it has caused it to wilt. Of course it was this colour, and now it's this colour. It's not something you'd want to give to uh, your friend, sure it's not.